couple of hardware updates. I was correct, so everybody on X that was telling me, no, the Azrock motherboards are fine, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, look. Azrock motherboards show fluctuating SOC voltage reaching 1.27 volts, and that is a risk factor for the Ryzen 9000 CPUs. You need to be careful with this if you're running a 9000 series CPU on an ASRock motherboard. And this comes from Brian. Um, he's been one of my early mentors on YouTube, by the way, from Tech Yes City. He's a great guy. I definitely recommend his channel. And he says that he tested these on a few motherboards, revealing a difference in how ASRock motherboards supply SOC voltage in contrast to others. If you are aware of the reports of dead Ryzen 9000 CPUs, particularly the 9800X3D, nothing conclusive has been found regarding the issues that are causing these deaths. Perhaps this is one of the first investigations that shed some light on the issue and might help users understand what is actually causing the CPU deaths. And... Um, it isn't the first time that we've seen a 9000 CPU dying on an ASRock motherboard, but there are actually nearly 200 such reports, most of them on Reddit. He finally tried to figure out what was going on, and as you can see in CPU-Z, you can see it peaking to 1.265 volts. Even though the fluctuation isn't that significant, the upper limit is somewhat higher than what is considered the maximum limit. So we can see that the SOC voltage in both cases exceeds 1.25 and comes close to 1.27. This is higher than what motherboards from the other vendors could supply to the SOC of the CPU and remains mostly near 1.2 volts, except for the ASUS X870E Crosshair crosshair hero which has by default added another 50 millivolts nonetheless it doesn't bridge the remain uh doesn't budge and remains constant all the time while the asrock motherboard keeps fluctuating which may result in permanent cpu damage as we've seen before nonetheless it should be kept in mind that it is the cpu that dictates how much soc voltage is needed and the deaths appear to be the result of how both cpu and motherboard handle the soc request Surely this needs to be deeper dived, et cetera. But if you're running an ASRock motherboard with a 9000 CPU or thinking about upgrading to a 9000 CPU, maybe at least hold off until there's a BIOS patch. There have been a couple BIOS patches. They haven't directly said that it's related to this SOC voltage, just voltage in general. Um, Cause I have seen it on a couple of my ASRock uh, AM5 motherboards. Um, I did swap to a gigabyte a motherboard for my main rig on AMD just because I don't want to deal with it. Um, but there is that, so keep that in mind. And then I saw this uh, for the miners and everybody. This might be interesting. AMD did unveil the Epic 4005 series processors. These processors are essentially AM5, uh, AM5 socket Epic processors, so server grade processors. Um, for the AM5 platform, which I found really, really interesting. Uh, they're designed to run 24-7, obviously good for CPU mining. And they do have the 16-core 32-thread at the top in the Epic 4565P. And this is going to also, which is really interesting, be available in bare metal and cloud compute instances in Vulture, which I utilize. I think there's some affiliate links running around there in Vulture. Uh, so maybe I can go test some out for mining over there on Vulture. I think they still allow it over there, so we'll see how it goes. But um, these are, there are one, two, three, four, five, six different models with the top range being 699. And that, that will be an X model, which will get you up to the 5.7 gigahertz boost with a 4.3 gigahertz base. And that will be 16 cores and 32 threads. They go all the way down to a six core 12 thread option in the 4245P. And that will be a base of 3.9 gigahertz and a boost of 5.4 gigahertz. Um, I, I think... You know, for longevity and mining, these are quite interesting um, because you can slot these into AM5 boards. They will work with non-ECC memory, presumably, which reduces your memory cost, but are still designed to be running, you know, server level workloads uh, for a very long amount of time at peak efficiency with lower latency. 
obviously developed for IT administrators, but could be extremely useful for cryptocurrency mining or really even in any sort of AI build you may be looking at in the future. I think the obviously the lanes are better than the Intel competitor on AM5. Um, but lanes are more limited than obviously their full line of uh, Epic series processors on the server grade side of things. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to run X amount of GPUs and blah, blah, blah. Make sure you look up the specific um, specifications for um, the new Epic series AM5s. But I'm pretty excited about those. I think those are pretty cool. Um as far as GPU mining, everything's looking a little bit better with KY and Cubic coming on to the profitability. Just figure I would mention that. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. If you'd like to see more from this particular episode, take a look up here. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me directly, you can go to sonofatech.locals.com and become a member. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday.